September 30th, 1995. It's 1.30am and 16 year old Ryan Brooks is at his friend's house playing video games. Now since it's getting pretty late, he calls his parents to tell them that he's going to spend the night at his friend's house. However, his parents don't answer. Instead, it's his older brother Nathan where he tells Ryan that their parents want him home immediately. However, instead of obeying, Ryan ignores this and stays for one more hour. Thankfully, this decision saved Ryan's life, as he later discovers that his older brother Nathan deceived him. Now his true goal was to lure Ryan home in order to kill him in the name of Satan, which he previously did with their parents just before calling his younger brother. Now this is the story of Nathan Brooks, also known as the Devil in Bel Air. April 23rd, 1978. Terry and Marilyn Brooks have three boys, with Nathan being the middle child. Now the family lives on a small area consisting of about 4,000 people in Bel Air, Ohio. Now the father, Terry Brooks, works as a mailman, while the mother, Marilyn, lands an office job. Now they live in a comfortable house on Margie Avenue, and at first glance, the family seems to have a healthy, loving relationship. However, behind those curtains is a home packed to the brim with anger and abuse. Now Terry is a constant drinker, and when he drinks, he rages at his wife and Nathan. When Nathan is only three years old, he tries to quote-unquote toughen him up by repeatedly striking him and berating him. And if Nathan would ever cry, the abuse would only get much worse. Now people would state that Nathan was actually a very joyful young boy, but as the abuse continued, he would become more and more isolated. Now although Marilyn and Nathan have a close relationship, the mother never actually does anything to stop the abuse, because she's afraid that other people would find out and in turn ruin her marriage, forever damaging her life. When Nathan grows older, he spends more time at church, even telling the clergy that when he becomes an adult, he wants to become a priest. Now Nathan then becomes curious about various other religions, such as Islam, Judaism, and Hinduism. It is then at this point where he realizes that he isn't like other people his age. He sadly loses two of his closest friends, the first one being from a brain tumor and the second one being from suicide. When he attends their funerals, he can't help but think about what happens after death. He doesn't have an ounce of sadness in him and he is solely focused on the idea of an afterlife existing based on the countless books he's been reading. After this, Nathan had a babysitter who introduced him to Satanism and it quickly took over his mind making him switch from Christianity. He often reads about the supernatural, later setting up an altar in his bedroom, and further listens to satanic-like music. Now his preferred reading changes from religious scriptures to books on Satanism and serial killers such as Jack the Ripper. And when Nathan is only 16, he's doing drugs, committing minor crimes, and is fascinated by death. His actions are all in the name of Satan, and even writes in his school notebook, Satan is my BFF, and Nathan Brooks, Master of Death. Now a concerned counselor calls Nathan's mother to help the boy out, but when she's informed about his actions, his mom just brushes it off and labels it as a phase that he's going through. Later, Nathan's older brother Jamie is concerned after they both spend the summer together in Columbus, Ohio. He finds Nathan's bone collection and discovers that he's been tormenting and killing animals. Now Nathan even stole a live lamb from a local college before butchering it and keeping the skull as a trophy. However, like his mom said, Nathan agrees that he's just going through a phase and tells Jamie that he has nothing to worry about. September 30th, 1995, exactly one month before Halloween, where it will forever change in the town of Bel Air. Ryan Brooks arrives home at around 2.30 in the morning and encounters a scene straight out of a horror movie. There is blood drenched all over the household. It floods the walls, floor, and the ceiling. Now he then walks over to the living room to find the head of their father in a punch bowl on a wooden chair. Terry's body is then found on his mattress and Marilyn is uncovered underneath the bed comforter. Marilyn is found with a knife cutting deep into her right abdomen, with both bodies being struck with an axe about a dozen times. When authorities arrive, they can't seem to find Nathan, but they do uncover several grim objects in his room. A rifle, axe, and many knives, along with several books on devil worshipping. They then find a cryptic drawing plastered all over his walls. Nathan is later located, a few hours later, 
near the family's car at a cemetery with crimson red still on his hands. Now the 17 year old is immediately arrested and when he's interrogated he confessed to shooting his father three times point blank and then finding a hacksaw to decapitate him. Now Nathan tells authorities that he prepared to use his father's head to make an offering to the devil. Nathan Brooks is then charged with two counts of aggravated murder and the gruesome details of the murder quickly spread throughout Bel Air. Later, there are rumors of a kill list being found in Nathan's bedroom. Now at first, investigators and police deny the existence of such a list, but the very thought of a list actually coming up results in mass hysteria spreading throughout the town, with many people speculating who could be the next victim. Now even though Nathan Brooks is locked up, it could still be plausible to assume that he was working with other Satan worshippers, and due to everyone being concerned for their lives, the town of Bel Air decides to cancel Halloween. Trick or treating came to a stop since there were parents who feared that something sinister could happen to their children. Later in the fall of 1996, the rumors of a kill list turned out to be true when investigators announced it during Nathan's trial. Now the list consists of about 16 names, with the first being Ryan Brooks, Nathan's younger brother with the words dismember and decapitate next to his name. Now the next two names being mother and father, with eviscerate and crucify next to his mom's name. Originally, he planned to nail her against the wall, but tells investigators that she was too heavy to carry. Thirteen additional names are marked in the notebook, with eight first names being readable. Amber, Lisa, Justin, Jason, Dave, Ryan, Corey, Jill, Mike, and Ashley. Some he wanted to murder individually, and others in groups, with words such as skin and dismember next to them. In October 1996, Nathan Brooks was proven guilty on two counts of murder and was handed two life sentences with eligibility for parole in 2038, when he will turn 60 years old. The lasting effects of the devil in Bel Air greatly changed how the town celebrates Halloween. They've started a yearly tradition called Boo at the Park, where all the kids in Bel Air gather in one area and are carefully observed to keep them safe.